In this presentation, we will set up a new QuickBooks file which will track both business and personal expenses with the use of the class tracking feature within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We will start by opening up the QuickBooks program. We are using 2019. However, any prior version will have a similar process to set up. QuickBooks will probably open to the prior file we had open as we have here in our business account. In order to start a new file, which we want to do as new QuickBooks file, we could uh, just go from this screen and go to file and new company. Or if you feel more comfortable, you may want to close out the current company we are in and then start the new file. So to do that, we go to close company. Just remember when you close the company, you want to know where that company is located so you can find it again. But we're going to close the company on the computer that is. Where's the actual file? And then here we have our data. This is going to be the, the last files we have had open. Again, these will help you to, to kind of navigate to where to open the files. But just note that this could kind of cause you problems in that they, they don't tell you exactly where the files are. So it's good to know where those files are physically located on the computer. So you can, if there's anything that happens to this screen, if you have to refresh or reboot the QuickBooks for whatever reason, you know where the files are located. So we're going to go up top and go, and I'll show you how to do that as we start this new file. We're going to go to the new company file. Now note also you could do that down here, create a new company. I like doing it from the file drop down because I can do this uh, no matter if there's a company open or not. I just prefer this method. So we're going to go to file drop down, new company. We're going to set up a new company. We're just going to use the quick setup. We're not going to go through the interview process. We're just going to quickly set this company file up with the minimal amount of information to do so. I'm going to name this file both business and personal. So we're going to put both in the same place. If we if we were using this on the business side, we may want to use just the business name if we're planning to track personal items with it as well. Because then if we make invoices or anything like that, it will show the business name on it. And so that would be the preferred method. And then we can just track personal stuff and it won't interfere with the business information. In other words, it's important for us to print reports with the business name. It's not as important for us to print personal reports with, a, you know, the personal name on it typically. So if you have a, a business name, that's probably the one you want to put, not the personal name on there. Then the industry, we're going to choose an industry. And again, I'm going to choose a business industry. The personal accounts that we're going to put in place, we're, we're not going to have, and none of these industries will fit because personal items are going to be different from person to person. So from a personal standpoint, we're going to have to just make up the accounts that we're going to use uh, or some of the business accounts might be appropriate, but we want to keep them separate so that we can separate on the profit and loss, the business and the personal in this account. We're going to use here the general product based and that's going to give us a chart of accounts. So this is a really important step because it's going to generate the chart of accounts. If we, if we were to choose no industry, we would have no chart of accounts over here and then that might be something we'd want to do because we can start from nothing and enter all the chart of accounts and then separate them as we go between business and personal. But I think it would be easier for most people to choose the business account that's be re being related and then we'll just add to it any personal account items and all the business accounts will be helping us by having them be pre-formatted. And it's most of businesses have a pretty standard business set of accounts. So this will be helpful for us. Most personal accounts don't have some the same type of standardization. So I'm going to say OK there. I'm going to choose the sole proprietor uh, for uh, our type of business. And if if we had a, if we have a large the larger the business, the more you really want to try to separate the accounting records uh, between the, the the QuickBooks files. But if you have a small business, it may be appropriate then to, you could try to use the same QuickBooks file to track everything and split them up with the use of uh, classes, which is what we will do here. So I would think that would be most appropriate for a sole proprietor, possibly a small partnership, uh, a single member S corporation. One, and as the business grows, as the needs grow, then more separation would probably be uh, a good thing to have. So. Here, we're going to assume that we're a small business, we're a sole proprietor, and we're going to track the business and personal within this QuickBooks file. 
I'm not going to put in the entity, the EIN or the business entity, but note that if you have a business EIN, if you have employees or if you have an employer identification number, you'd want the business EIN uh, here, not the personal, probably not your social security unless that is your, your identification number. Because once again, in any place you might need it, like if we did payroll, we're not going to do payroll here, but if you did payroll, then you, you want the business information here on the personal side. You don't need, it doesn't really matter. So you're, you're just tracking the data. And then the same with the address. So if you have a personal address and a business address, then we probably want the business address because if we make any invoices, if we, if we uh, put any bills, typically invoices, then we want the business address on it probably. If it's the same address, then that's okay. And then we can put the personal and business. <laughs> but if there's a business and personal, then we want to make sure that any documentation we have is probably the formal stuff is the what stuff we're worried about and therefore we want to use the business address the informal stuff is is just we're probably just tracking our personal data within the system to help us with the with the personal information and therefore uh, don't need the personal address on there because we're not creating anything formal typically with the personal so then we'll just create the company file QuickBooks will, of course, mention a few other fine features and products that they have available if we would like to look at them. And, and of course, payroll being something of, of use if we need checks and whatnot, but we're not going to do any of that at this time. So I'm going to close this out. We're going to close this out. We'll then be left with the home page. Typically, I typically open the open windows. Note that QuickBooks didn't tell us where it put the file. It did it so fast that it just saved it somewhere and it probably saved it somewhere. That's where we last put the information. So the next thing you want to do is just make sure you know where the file's at. So one way to do that is to go to the file dropdown and then go to the open previous. And this will give you a mapping of your computer of where QuickBooks put it on the computer. And if you want to move it from whatever location it put it, then you can, you can close the, you can find it using this mapping, close the program. And you might want to screenshot this so that, you know, copy and paste it in a word or notebook or something so you can, have it open as you as you look through your files and then find it then close quickbooks then cut and paste it or drag and drop it to wherever you want it and then we're going to have to open quickbooks from there again to get back in here just the, the bottom line being that if you want to move the file you got to locate it and then you got to close this quickbooks file to move it then move it then open the quickbooks back up and we'll start from there next time for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info